Hi there, guys. Quick review. Uh, let's do link traits, multiple alleles, sex link traits, and pedigrees. So let's do that. Let's start off with link traits. Link traits were uh, what we talked about when we said that why do people have red hair and freckles? And basically what we said is that they're, the reason that they're inherited together is because they're on the same chromosome. And if you remember, a chromosome can either be this or this. This one is after it's replicated, and this one's uh, before it's repli replicated. But basically what it means is like you got red hair and freckles are found on the same chromosome like this. And so when they become sperm and egg, they get inherited together. They're like a package deal. If red hair, if two traits are, are not linked, they're found on separate chromosomes. So, you know, like there's a trait here for one thing, and then over here on a totally different chromosome, you'll see uh, this other trait. And so those could be inherited independently. So we said red hair and freckles are linked. The other thing we said, though, is, hey, you can get combinations. You can get people with dark hair and freckles. How, how does that happen? And what we said was that chromosomes can exchange material by crossing over. So if you have two chromosomes that are next to each other, like this, and they do hang out in pairs, remember? This is your mom and your dad gave you a homologous pair. Well, hair and freckles are on this one. Um, and so what happens is if this is red hair and this is dark hair, well, if these two switch, basically these two chromosomes switch, these, they exchange these materials, then someone can get red hair and no freckles, and someone can get dark hair and freckles. And so you can get combinations. So this is called crossing over. The crossing over of chromosomes increases your variety. And so you can get like dark hair and blue eyes, you can get a, uh, you know, dark hair and freckles, yada, yada, yada. So that's link traits. Multiple alleles. All right, multiple alleles. We said that there are certain traits that have multiple alleles. Our famous group, our question is the, our famous example is the ABO alleles in blood types. Now remember, these are the alleles you can have. You have three different alleles. You can have four different blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. These are blood types. Oops. Blood types. And then under that, we could say, hey, what's the, what genotype can you be? So these are genotypes over here. Genotypes. We'll go backwards. If you're O blood type, then you can only be, you can carry two O alleles. If you're AB blood, that means you have one A allele and one B allele. If you're B blood, you're either carrying two B alleles or one B and the O allele and AAAO. So these are the genotypes for the blood. So you can be A blood type but have two different genotypes. You could be one that's totally two A's or one that's an A and an O. So we said that you can do crosses. Um, so some of the problems that I may give you are asking you things like, um, which of the following crosses would give you someone with uh, AB blood? And so this cross, if you do someone that has pure A and pure B, that gives you 100% AB blood. Because this would be AB, that 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 would be, all right, I'll stop. So that's one way that you can get AB blood. But you can get AB blood other ways. For example, you can have someone who's AO and BO, and if you notice, this doesn't give you, this gives you different blood types, but this person can give you AB there. The second one would give you B blood type, this would give you A blood type, and this would give you O blood type. So this cross actually can give you four different blood type children, if you notice there's four different blood types, okay? So that's something we did in class too. We uh, In class we said, hey, what cross would give you three different blood types? or children that only have one type of blood type. So be ready for that, be, be able to do these crosses. And the genotypes you use are, are these guys here. Um, you use any of these genotypes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six genotypes. We then talked a little bit about blood. And just know that um, O is the universal donor. 
you what am i writing Ugh, sorry universal donor and that means that it can give blood to everyone else so it can give to a b it can give to a it can give to b and it can give to itself which we won't put there but let's pretend that it gives to the, uh, the other ones um, AB is the universal recipient, so it can get from that one, it can get from that one, it can get from all of them, okay? Now, A can only give to, um, it can only give to AB, but N itself, all right? And then in class, we talked about why that was, um, so you'll have to review your notes on antigen and antibodies. And uh, just as a, I'll review one of them, if you have A blood type, A blood type has A antigens, which are little markers on the surface of the blood cell. This is sort of the signature of an A blood person. And inside your body, you have anti B antibodies. That means you would attack someone who gave you, here's some B blood. This is, these are little red blood cells, by the way, that we're drawing. If someone tries to give someone with A blood type this B blood type, well, they have something to attack it. They're called antibodies. And that's why you can't give B blood to an A person. But the reason you can give A, B, sorry, the reason you can give O to everyone is because O doesn't have any antigens. A doesn't, um, O blood type doesn't have these little markers that your body will uh, freak out about if, it, if that blood enters. So... O has no antigens, and AB has no antibodies. That's the reason that AB can get blood from everyone. It's because it has no antibodies to attack this blood. Okay, cool. All right, so we're done with that. That's mul an example of multiple alleles. Another thing is really quick. People keep, this is not related to this. People keep asking me in class, what's a monohybrid? What's a monohybrid, Mr. Gonzalez? Monohybrid. Um, we said there we're covering three uh, types of like inheritance monohybrid is your regular like tall plant tall plant short plant this is mendel's regular dominance where these guys are tall and this guy's short incomplete dominance is the other example where i'll use the t's too i don't care um no that's not a good idea <laughs> that's going to confuse you incomplete dominance that's the one where we said red pink and white this is a weirdo case three colors red pink white and then codominance uh it's black Ooh, black white like a speckled chicken and white this is the only time we use different letters is with codominance if you look in your book or anything they use a different uh, system sometimes than this sometimes incomplete dominance uses big letters but we're using this so we can kind of help you remember that these are co-dominant. They're such big letters, they like dominate together. So that should help you a little bit. Or so I hope, but. All right, that's, we got that, we got that. Let's do sex linked traits. Okay, first let's talk sex. Female, male. A regular cross between a female and a male gives 50%, if you notice, 50% females, these are females, XX, and male is XY. So every cross is going to give you 50% female, 50% male, okay? So now, sex link traits are, or diseases uh, are uh, carried on the X chromosome. So what we did was we talked about Morgan, and Morgan was the scientist that tried to do Mendel's experiment, but with fruit flies. So what we said he did was he took a red-eyed female and a, a white-eyed male, which was a mutant he had, and he got 100% red. Awesome. So far, so good. He then crossed, this is the P generation, this is the F1 generation. He then crossed two of these F1 generation and he got 75% red and 25% white. This is totally what Mendel did. Totally, totally, everything's cool. They're the same percentages. The only thing that was weird was this. This guy right here, the, of the 25% white he kept getting, they were all male. 
And so he was like, what? And he had to go into a new direction. He was like, why are they all male? So he figured out that the trait for this red eye was being carried on the sex chromosome, the X chromosome. So let me show you that now. Here's his first cross. He took a red eye female and a white eyed male. If you notice, only the letters for R, red, dominant, are only on the X's. Notice Y doesn't get anything. So this is just the typical regular old Punnett square. X big R, X little R. X big R, X little R. So these are female. Yay. This one is red eye male, red eye male. So 100% red. That was his F1 generation. These are the parental. He then took female from there and a male from there and mated them. So he got X big R, X little R, X big R, Y. And this is where he got his 75 to 25. If you notice, he got X big R, X big R, that's a red. X big R, X little R, that's a red. X big R, ooh, sorry, X big R, Y, this is a red male. And this one is the white male right here. 75 red to 25% white. That's totally normal Mendelian things, but this is why only males got it. If a male gets only one factor, one little r, it's going to be white-eyed because red is dominant. But a female could be a carrier. This female is a carrier for white eye, but she totally has red eyes. She looks normal. And these are called sex link traits, anything that's carried on the X chromosome. Okay, now the thing we talked about was that we said that in humans, color blindness is something that's um, sex linked. So basically, what we were saying, like more males are color blind because as soon as they get the little, we'll use ours because that's easy. As soon as they get the little color blind trait from their mom, by the way, they're color blind. So this would be a color blind male. And the way we can sort of track these diseases is by using what's called a pedigree. And a pedigree is just like a family tree, and the rules are somewhat like this. Males are square. Normal males are unshaded. Diseased males, or males that show the disease, are full. So this is a colorblind male. And this is a normal female. You get that? And then same thing with female. Now, although males get it more, females can be colorblind, and I'll show you that in a second. So this right here is a colorblind, I'll just abbreviate, colorblind female and a normal female. How do you get a colorblind female? So look, if you have a mom who carries it, she's carrying the disease, and she, her mate has the disease, he's colorblind, then watch. They can make a normal female who's a carrier and a colorblind female. Check her out. She's colorblind. She's got two little letters. So you can get it. It's just, it's harder to be a female that's colorblind. It's harder. You have to have a parent who's carrying it marry someone who is colorblind. The chances of that are more slim than a male just getting it. Now, you got to be careful for some of these questions. Like, for example, we were talking about this in our hippos class today. If I ask you about chances of, so here's what I mean. Let's say a, we'll do the same one we just did. So let's say a carrier female marries a colorblind male. Okay, if I can ask you stuff like um, their next child, okay, is a boy. Like we know it's going to be a boy. What um, what what's the probability that their boy will be colorblind? Well, you can't use the whole Punnett square if you're just talking about boys. I could change this question and I can say, what are the chances of having a child that is? So we'll write that here. Chances that their next child 
is colorblind. All right, so these are two different questions. So this one I'm telling you, hey, their next kid is definitely a boy. What are the chances that the boy is colorblind? So let's do it. So here we go. We got a normal girl, normal, sorry, colorblind female, normal male, colorblind male. So look, the first question, hey, we know their next child is a boy. That means we're going to look at these two boxes. I'm even going to highlight it. Let me highlight it right there. If I'm looking only at the boys, what are the chances that they'll have a boy that's colorblind? And the chances are not 25%. The chances are, if I'm looking at these two, the chances are 50%. They have a 50-50 chance that this boy is going to be colorblind because we're only looking at these two, 50-50. If I said, what are the chances that their next child will be colorblind? Well, in this case, it turns out it's the same answer, but the reason is, um, let me highlight a different color. Uh, the reason is here. These two are colorblind. And so the answer is 50, but you're actually looking at all boxes in that one. Okay, so both answers are the same, but we got it different ways, just so you know that. So sometimes you use the whole Punnett square, and sometimes if I just say boy or girl, you just look at half of it. Okay, so be ready for that. So one last thing to show you is the another pedigree. Let me show you this pedigree. Where is it at? Uh, is it that one? Is it that one? Sure, why not? This one right here. So this pedigree we did in class um, and basically we were one thing you have to be able to figure out is which parents are um, like what the genotype are for parents now here's the thing if you get this on a test you know immediately what every male is because if they're shaded they are this and this guy's not shaded so he's that easy the females are a little tougher for the females you need to figure out what the children are because there's no way that this lady is X big R, X big R. There's no way, because look at her daughter. Her daughter is X little R, X little R. Dad gave her one, and mom had to give her the other one. And so this can't be the mama. So we have to make sure that she has a little R. And that means that she gave, her to the, gave that to the daughter. So we know what she is. Cool? What else do we know? Here, let's look at this part of the family here. We know this lady because she's totally shaded, and we know this guy because he is not, all right? So how did this, if I ask you, hey, how did this boy become colorblind? Well, dad gives a Y. It's not dad's fault. Mama gave one of her, her X little R's. And if I were to ask you, hey, they're going to have another boy, we'd put it over here. If they're going to have another boy, what are the chances that that boy are colorblind? Hmm, Jeopardy music. The chances that that boy are colorblind are huge because I'm going to cross that mama with that dada. So check it out. Mama, dada. The chances are 100%. If I, I said if they have a boy, so I don't even care about the girls, but X little R Y, X little R Y, the chances are 100% that their boy will be colorblind, okay? And if I ask you, hey, what are the chances that their child will be colorblind? Well, the chances that their child will be colorblind are, sorry, 50%, 50% color, uh, colorblind, 50% normal. But if they're having a boy, there's a 100% chance that that boy will be colorblind. Okay, so I hope that helps. And if you need these answers for these things are in our notebook, so you can check that out. If you need any more help, just come see me somewhere, ask me a quick question, and I'm here to help you guys. Good luck. Okay. All right.